and welcome to another episode of the Hood Grace Podcast. It's your boy, Reverend Rudy Rubio of the Reformed Church of Los Angeles in the city of Linwood with my friend, my sister, the amazing, the dope artist, Liz Weiss. Liz, I didn't realize how many people love your music. I remember a few <laughs> years ago, I was like, oh, let me tell you about Liz Weiss. Not everybody knows who you are. But Aww. please, for those, for those two people hiding under a rock, can you please tell us who Liz Weiss is? Well, to the two people hiding under the rock, I don't know how the people who aren't under the rock found out about me, but I am a full-time musician. Um, I want to quit this job all the time. (laughs) (laughs) And then I'll be with a group of people that I feel very safe with and seen and known. And I'm like, oh, let me just do this one more thing. Yeah. Oh, if we're all going to be together, let's let me just record this song then just so that I, and then I'll, I'll leave and then I'll I'll be done. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been saying that for almost seven years. (laughs) How, how long have you been dedicated to to just a full time, uh, music? You know, I think how, how long has it been since we've known each other now? I have no idea. It's, it's been a minute. I know I was like, Liz, I need you to come perform at our, um, church plant fundraising, you know, event that we're going to have in one year, you were this close to coming mm-hmm. and then some guy named Lecrae invited you to go on tour with them. And it oh, was that was the beginnings was of my <laughs> music career. Um, I'm like, oh, this is not a good angle, but whatever. <laughs> you look beautiful, sis. Don't worry about <laughs> it. You look good. You look good. You're good. Um, yeah, I have been doing music even that time with Lecrae I had just signed with a manager the following Uh, year and I don't know I agreed to doing music and when I say that it wasn't with particular like with anyone in particular it was mm -hmm. like okay Lord am I called to do this thing Mm -hmm. what is calling every sermon I heard that was like this week we're going to talk about calling I was like good i'm gonna find out i don't have to do this yeah um and and then yes liz you must do this (laughs) (laughs) and then the longer i've been doing music the more i I realized that god is just calling me to live out on this earth as it is in heaven Mm -hmm. knowing that the fullness of the lord is in me and like adam and eve I don't have to listen to the lie that I need to become like something to be seen and known and loved, even though I don't really feel like I need to, but it's like God is in me and I have full permission from the creator of the universe to do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. And yeah, at first I was doing music out of obligation and I wasn't resting and I didn't necessarily have a team around me, even with management. Like I wasn't really, I didn't have like a team around me Mm -hmm. to help me figure out how to do the business of music. And so I started flying solo or what? I mean, you had a team, but not really. I mean, I still had a team, but I was like, uh, I don't know how to advance shows. What does that mean? I don't know how to engage with venues. I need some help. I need help with all of these emails that are sliding through the cracks. Like, what is it that you're doing for me? And then I just started getting resentful Mm, towards God. Like, you called me to do this thing. I mean, it's just like any other person in the Bible where God calls them to do something and they're like, uh. Wait, they were suffering? Like they were struggling? <laughs> no. <laughs> they were like, I'm done with this. You got the wrong person. I remember when I was on tour, um, someone who had been playing drums for me, his mom died out of nowhere. And I had fallen down the stairs the, mor- the morning we took him to the airport. Oh, wow. And broke my toe. And there's blood behind because my, it, yeah, it's a lot. Wait, you mess. broke your toe and there was blood all over the place? Yeah. So okay. my pinky toe kind of ripped. There was oh. like, yeah, it's bad. And I remember just like almost passing out and thinking, I don't, I don't want to do this. Mm-hmm. Like, this is not what I signed up for. I don't care about being famous. I'm only doing this because I've seen how God has brought me into places that sometimes, 
the church neglects to see that God loves certain people too, mm. neglects to go into spaces that they say it's forbidden. Like I, I was recently thinking about the story of Joshua where all the spies go over and look and they see these giants and they're like, we can't go there. Yeah. No, and they just defeated Goliath. Yeah. And Joshua's like, but we have God. What are you talking about? Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily do that on my own, but it was something because I was like, oh, it's like a burning bush. This, this thing, this career, this path isn't being consumed. And so I need to move towards it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm very yeah. curious to see mm -hmm. how this is working out. Um, but I was burning at both ends of the candle trying to have my management manage me as well as managing bandmates. And mm -hmm. I got in a car wreck, I broke my foot and it was like, but are you going to make it to the next show? And so it became less that, about, that was, that was it. Like, are you going to make it to the next show? Not, are you okay? Are you all right? No. Are you resting? Yeah. Are you in Sabbath? Uh -huh. then we exchanged messages and emails and, you know, I was trying to pray for you as best as I could. I knew you were going yeah. through a hard time. So, and it was just hard. And then I started resenting, like, why would God give me this gift if it only it's all at my expense? And I know that we're supposed to live a life of sacrifice, but it's like I like to the point of sacrifice to where I'm resenting something that could be so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so I let go of that team and I hired people here and there to help me push out my music. And it wasn't until like I moved to New York City and that is like a whole other That's a whole different story, right? Netflix docu-series <laughs> um, where I was working for a church. <laughs> I didn't know that. And it was not a good experience. Oh, and church. it like it it hit me of like, do you trust God? And I'm like, no but I can't stay in this place. And so the trust was to leave that job because I was in New York city mm -hmm. doing that job and being a full-time musician touring. I was like at the airport almost every other weekend, or I would play a show until 3 AM and then wake up four or five hours later to be wow. at the church. Um, and it was like, do you trust me? And it's like, I don't, but I also have no other choice. Like but to trust, yeah. I have to, I have to move forward. I'm too far out in the ocean. I'm either going to drown or I have to keep swimming. Yeah. And, and then the pandemic hit. I mean, I skipped so much. I mean, like there's a story. You feel where, free to share whatever you want to share. Okay. Yeah. You, you let us in, you, you know, whatever you want to share this. So one example of, do you trust me? Taking this leap that I felt like I was leaping into complete darkness where I didn't know where the ground was. It was right after I had um, stepped down from that church position, skipping mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. And even that whole situation, because, you know, we're always taught gossiping is wrong. It's in the scriptures. But there's a difference between gossiping and processing and calling people out and holding people accountable. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, but I always felt like this protection of the bride, even though the bride was is being prostituted out all mm -hmm. the time. And the bride yeah. is the body of Christ. The church, yeah. Um, and so I just held all these experiences in because I never wanted to seem ungrateful, but it was making I was turning into Gollum and feeling defeated and feeling like, what is the point? And so while one of my best friends left New York city and I was leaving the apartment that I had been living in for a little over a year. I moved nine times in three and a half years, oh, six God. times in one year. Um, it was in 2018. And as I was like feeling so defeated and I had just finished my record and was about to release it. I felt, I told someone, I feel like God has undressed me and this record is like a handful of feathers. And when I let go of them, I don't know where they're going to land. Mm -hmm. And I had met this woman like a month prior once, like once we talked very little, mm -hmm. but she's a friend of a friend. She's now a friend, 
but she was like, I was just praying. And this is like the second or third time the Holy Spirit just brought your name to mind. Um, do you need like, like clothes for a music video or for like a photo shoot or something? I was like, no, in my mind, I was going to, she has a friend who has a bag of free clothes that yeah. they're giving away. And she's like, well, I feel like God is telling me that he wants to dress you. Come in the feathers. And I was like, in my mind, I was like, I feel like God is stripping everything away. Like the story of Eustace in, uh, in Narnia. I don't know what book it is. Maybe it's silver chair or somebody's <laughs> nephew. Don't worry about it. Um, where he becomes a dragon and God has to peel off the scales from him to become a little boy again. And I felt like, so after the, after Aslan peels the skin off of the, these scales off of Eustace, cause he tried to do them himself. And every time he would take these scales off when he was a dragon, they would just grow back thicker and mm -hmm. stronger. And so God had to take these scales off and pick him up. And he was in so much pain when Aslan picked up Eustace. I might be telling the story completely wrong, but my friend wrote this whole essay and I love it. Basically picks up Eustace and tosses him into this lake. Mm -hmm. And when he comes up, his skin is completely healed and it feels so soothing to the, the painful removal of the, the dragon <clears throat> scales that he had had. Um, and when she said, I feel like God wants to dress you and the words that come to mind are glamor and splendid. Mm -hmm. And even then I was like, did he say what colors I should buy? Like, I was just like, so ready for someone to just tell me what the will of God was. And she just sent me money. And it was in that moment where I was like, I left this job that felt like security. I'm a six on the Enneagram. So I like safety and security. Mm -hmm. I left this job that felt like security even though it wasn't good for my self image or mm -hmm. my spiritual safety, um, at least for me, probably for other people. Sure. Um, and the Lord took care of me. Like I bought new clothes with that money. I didn't spend it on, let me pay rent. I didn't spend yeah, yeah. it on. I'm only going to buy groceries with this. I was like, okay, I'm going to spend this on something I'm terrified to spend it on. And that's clothes. Mm -hmm. And I house hopped for like two months. And then I finally had some people come to me and say from the church I worked at, uh -huh. the you've one been that you coming. Left. Yeah. You've been coming to mind so much. And we want to know if you want to be our roommate, we have a guest room. And we want to offer it to you with no financial burden. And it felt like another one of those things where it was like, okay, God is like laying this stuff out for me. Yeah. So I don't need to strive for it. And I'm going to skip a bunch of stuff. And then I released my record. And then it charted on the billboards and I got to hire the team that I felt the safest with. Um, and I remember when I found out that my second record charted on the billboards, I was sitting at the kitchen counter by myself and my friend called and she's like, let's do a shot. And I just started sobbing. I was like, wow. my career is nothing without my people mm -hmm. and when the pandemic hit i was finally able to just stop completely sabbath like because we live in a country that strives on like that that is the motto and the american dream the american dream and it's it's a lot of striving it's a lot of sacrifice it's a lot of settling for well this is good enough and i'm like i met it it's but just God it's is, non-stop it's non-stop non it just keeps going and going and going and christians knowing that we're supposed to sabbath 
But when it comes down to actually doing it, it's like, so, so what? So, so what? Like, yeah, what's that? It's an option. It's not yeah. a command. And I think the fear is, is that if we stop, if we actually stop, then we'll be forgotten. If we actually stop, we'll lose the momentum to get to this thing that we're told we're supposed to have. If yeah. we stop, then I'll have to feel everything that I've been avoiding. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up leaving New York City. That's all that in itself. <laughs> We're going to do like a 10 part series. Yeah. The Grace podcast with Liz Weiss. <laughs> that in itself is like, yeah, I'm done with this. And so I just hit like, I was just so depressed. And I said, before I make my next record, I need to focus on self-care. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to apologize. I don't want to feel bad for taking care of myself and feeling like I'm being selfish by stopping. And so I started therapy. Uh -huh. um, and then I had still been recording music for a church that I'm a part of. I still consider like my other church family in New York City. Um, and I'm still doing stuff with them, but it felt safe. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, I was a part of something that was bigger than me okay, and was asked to use my gift in a way that made me feel seen and whole. And then I've slowly one by one, I like, I have these songs that I'm like, I wanted to make a full record of, but I'm like, I will never return back to music the way that I was before this pandemic started. And so I have to do it on my terms and I have to believe that God has given me permission to do that. And so I'm like, let me record these two songs and then I'll record this song. And then maybe I'll record two other songs later, but I have to do it at my own pace. And it feels very scary because I'm not really making any money and I'm living off of savings. And even though I, poverty mentality is not a good thing, it also helped me a lot because I was always afraid to spend money for exactly this, a pandemic. And that's why sixes are amazing. Thank you, <laughs> podcast over. <laughs> oh man, I, in the seminary, I took a class on the Enneagram. I think I was like, a a one and an eight or eight and a one, just like the worst of the worst, you know, <laughs> like a very anal angry person or something like that, if memory serves me correct. But t t let's talk about the pandemic. So, so if the pandemic hits and, and Liz Weiss is now forced to Sabbath for a year. Have you Sabbath for a year? Have you recorded um, those two songs? Have you, are you making any progress with that? Are you still in the midst of rest or, or what, what's going on currently with you right now? So in the pandemic, pandemic hit i was actually on tour going towards seattle which was okay. the hot spot yeah and then everything shut down and i struggle with feeling guilt all the time like no a life of sacrifice even though this could put my life in danger um and so i had to be like i you that conference is canceled and now you're gonna host a party at your house but that's not safe for me i am yeah. high risk yeah um and so that was canceled. I felt so horrible. And then I got an email saying, good thing you didn't come up here. Got really bad. I'm like, I know. So it went from me being in Portland on my way to, to Seattle to getting to New York City to being like, we still don't know what's happening. Yeah. And I went and, and to, New York was a hot spot for a while. It became a hot spot right after I moved, went back home. Wow. <laughs> and then there's an apartment that I ended up moving into again was that was that move number 10 or that was that part of the night that was move number eight okay oh there's still one more after this because i honestly it could be 10 because i was in a brooklyn apartment moved to another apartment in manhattan mm -hmm. and then after that fell apart man that was really messed up i moved to another apartment before i moved to la which yeah. then became the hot spot after i moved here is it like the pandemic following you, Liz, or what, you know? 
I don't know. I'm like, if you can't beat it, join it. But join I'm it. fully vaccinated now, and I Good. never. Maybe I got sick because I was really sick all of fall of 2019, like really? on tour. You know, I was you know there, so there's sick. a lot of people is that I know that say that they had it before it became like really out there. Like there's friends yeah. that said, bro, remember when I was in December or January yeah. when I was sick? Like I had never been sick like that in my life. And yeah, it was this and this and this. I think I had it back then. Yeah. So I mean, I was sick all of most of November. And then I got back from tour and was in Portland and was in the bed for four days with a fever. And I was like, man, I haven't had a fever in so long, yeah. but it was either COVID or burnout. I don't know. My body was done. Yeah. And so I finally moved into this apartment in Manhattan and I was, I felt so relieved. Like I, it was terrifying. There are many moments where I felt extreme sadness about what was happening mm -hmm. in the world. Extreme sadness. Now we have time to see that black people and brown people are being put in cages and dying and being killed. Like it was on just on top of the pandemic. On top, on of, the top pandemic. of the pandemic. Yeah. I mean, stuff that brown and black people have known our whole lives, but like to just be bombarded with it mm -hmm. one death after another after another and then the election oh my gosh it was we couldn't catch a break right could not catch a break and then i lived in an apartment where my landlord failed to inform the apartment that i was moving in she didn't know it was a co-op and so i kind of had to move out four months after i moved in when a woman saw that a black woman was moving into this building. No way. You're kidding so, me. So that's like a whole thing. But 2021 and, and, and no, 2020. Oh, 20. Still 2020. Same thing. It's like, oh, you're no. kidding me. It was when she saw me, she was like, she actually lives here. And then the next day I got an email from my landlord saying, yeah, apparently I didn't fill out this form. So come on up to upstate to visit me. And then. I was like crawling to rest after all of the deaths. And then we ended up saving her life when her femur cracked in half. But before that, dude, this is like a, a, just a series <laughs> of like short stories, Liz, that we've got to do some kind of other stuff to it to get. Oh, out yeah. There, huh? um, before that, I would just sit in silence like I didn't want to watch TV. Mm -hmm. I would work on music projects just for fun. Like I wrote a song called See the Day and I really wasn't planning it like when I was going to release it. So I finally picked a date and that happened to be like the two week, two weeks into lockdown or something. It was something yeah. that felt monumental as far as we, as a, like a, a, a globe, as earth, earthlings just felt defeated with this pandemic. We didn't know what was happening. And so I released that song called See the Day. And yeah, this is when people were protesting. It literally, man, it was just so much stuff. And I would just sit in silence and felt so safe sitting in silence and asking God, I, or, 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 talking to the Lord saying, I really hope your plan for salvation is bigger than anything I've ever been taught on a Sunday. Oh, definitely. Um, and so what does that mean? We, this, this is why you flooded the earth. <laughs> to get rid of all the weird people. Because we are messing this up. You're so, the people who are supposed to be advancing the kingdom yeah. are cowards and not we're wretched, afraid. not wretched, not wretched. We are wretched. <laughs> yeah, we are wretched. We are wretched. Um, and a lot of us operate out of so many ideas that don't actually come from God. Mm -hmm. I was so tired of living out of fear because, like, in is it Matthew or Mark where Jesus says? Don't worry about what you're going to eat, drink, or what you're going to wear for the Lord. God knows what you need before you even ask of it. Talks about clothing the lilies of the field, right? How much more will he care for us? And so it's like, man, I have not been living like I believe that. 
because I'm always so afraid of doing the wrong thing. I'm always Mm -hmm. so afraid of living a life inspired by the Holy Spirit because it's just so countercultural to the American dream. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I'm supposed to live out the American dream, but then I don't know where I belong. So what, what, so with with all that that you've been saying that you've been going through and the American dream, I mean, it's obvious you have a gift from God like that. There's no doubt. It's obvious that you've been using your gift for God, because I'll tell you, I was here at the Mint. I don't know if it's like Hollywood Mm -hmm. or in that area. And I was surprised when I got there. I was like, oh, this isn't a Christian event. Mm -mm. This isn't a Christian venue. Mm -mm. And my my daughter, Natalia, who loves your music, by the way, was like totally like she was like so messed up because she was finally going to meet Liz Weiss. And then we found out that it was 18 and over, you know, because they served alcohol there. But you were kind and you sent her a little video that you made. It was dope. But anyways, I see people that aren't Christian and they're rocking out to the music that you're singing. Mm -hmm. And your music is all about Jesus, like Mm -hmm. like in in some way, shape or form. Um, What has that been like for you? maybe talk about how that's been has that inspired your music are you writing different are you what do you feel the lord is carrying you with some of that because just the the, your voice is beautiful the music Mm -hmm. is great but sometimes you can enjoy it without really paying attention to the music Mm -hmm. and that night i saw liz how people who were not believers in the lord jesus were rocking out to the songs you were singing about him and to him yeah i mean i feel like i have that epiphany in portland Cause Portland, every, like I would go places and they're like, so tell me, what is it like being a Christian in Portland, Oregon? And I'm like, it's great. I'm so thankful. I found Jesus in Portland because people don't go around pretending to be Christian. Mm -hmm. Like it's not a cultural thing. You either are or you're not. (laughs) And and most likely you're not. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was the city of Portland who embraced me. They're like, man, I am an atheist, but I love your sound. It's so nostalgic. I don't know what it is. Yeah. It's, it's frustrating. It's the, it's the Holy Spirit. I know. And that's what <laughs> I would, I was just like so curious because I also was working in film production. I had been offered this job to do like background well, that's, what, that's what your education is in, right? Mm-hmm. Isn't that what your background is in? Yeah. I was offered a job to do background casting for a TV show, like for the whole show, for the whole season. Mm-hmm. And then I was on tour And I was like, am I going to do this thing that I've always wanted to do? Or am Mm -hmm. I going to do this thing that is just like, why are non-Christians so drawn to this music? So I played this show in downtown Portland, which this area, like if you go up the second staircase, it's like naked, fully naked strip club upstairs. Mm -hmm. So I'm like in this den, in the den, right? And... I'm seeing all these people and their arms are around each other and I'm singing these songs and there's so much darkness that happens in that area. Portland is really heavy in human trafficking, sex trafficking, Mm -hmm. like prostitution, stuff like that. We have more strip clubs than Las Vegas. I think so. Um, And being and knowing like there were two people who are when I posted I didn't want to post that I was playing at this venue because I was like I don't want any people in church knowing I'm playing at this place but I also (laughs) sit me down for a while (laughs) they asked me to play at this place and this is insane and so I have to do it Mm -hmm. um and I remember going to this meeting with um this uh shelter homeless shelter multiple and and People were like, we're going to let us know what time your show is. We're going to come. We're going to come and we're going to be with the people and pray over people while we're there. And so I just I had this moment, this euphoric moment where Jesus was like, these are my people, too. Mm -hmm. These are my people, too. And people with their arms around each other. I always make people touch each other, sing with each other, like. Because you, when you sing together, like, you don't know someone's story, but you become one with that person. Mm-hmm. Um, and something that transcends, music transcends. I can listen to music in different languages and have no idea what they're saying, but feel a connection. Sure. 
And I remember I sat at this bar and this grown man was crying and he's like, man, I haven't been to church in so long. Wow. And I was like, oh, that is what I get to do. And so I have people ask me, how is it that you're still doing this? How do you make your money? I'm like, I don't know how I make my money other than the Lord. I work really hard. I save but I don't know how that oil, that pot of oil is staying full. And I'm not looking behind the curtain to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It reminds I know me it's of... not coming from people. Like yeah. I've had people donate money to me, like friends say, I feel like the Lord is saying he loves you because he loves you because he loves you because he loves you. And it'll just be an envelope with money. And I am just like, okay, I don't want to be afraid to invest in this gift that God gave me, but I have to do it from a healthy place. Yeah. I don't feel like touring again, unless it's like dream, a dream upon a dream of touring situation. Yeah. Um, and so I'm just going to record these, these songs. I don't know what's going to happen. And I think that these songs that I'm working on now, they're for everyone. And this isn't from like a universalist perspective. I'm like, no, this no is No accusations. Like, I'm just... Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not accusing. I'm not thinking nothing. We're not having a theological talk. We're just, uh -uh. I'm hearing my sister out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, I think the kingdom of heaven is now, and everyone has access to it. And I have to believe what Jesus says when he's like, even if you shut the mouth of these, the rocks will cry out. Mm hmm crooked sticks with straight lines. I believe God, God used a donkey to save someone's life. Yeah. And those aren't just fairy tales. These are things that actually happened. And it's like, do you believe that? Yeah. Then you need to live like your life like you do. do. Do you mind sharing with us how you came to find Jesus in Portland? Oh, well, I, you know, my mom, she raised five kids on her own. I was going to this private elementary school. My mom would like scrub toilets mm -hmm. to get a discount from tuition. And my aunt would help pay for it because we're, we grew up Catholic. Um, and I met my best friend and we used to play bass. I grew up Catholic too. <laughs> but I watched this TV show called Dairy Girls and okay everything that they do because it's about ireland and the uh -huh. the wars between the protestants and the and catholics, catholics yeah. and the just the catholics i'm like it is universal okay like the guilt the catholic guilt from the mom i don't know how it happens but it's real i'm in therapy because of it I'm a um <laughs> but it's you. so funny to me it's so funny to me and the older i get the more i can laugh at how my mom engages with me i yeah. love my mom um yeah, so I met my best friend and we started going to church together because church felt it was structure. We're talking about a Christian church now. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a okay. The real church. No, just kidding. I don't know. I didn't say nothing, but I mean, there is only one Catholic church. It's not Roman. It's the Catholic the yeah. universal, universal church. Universal church. And yeah. like, is Jesus Lord? Mm -hmm. um, and so I started going to this church and I just this tug was like, get baptized. How old were you Liz, at this time? I was 14 and then okay. I turned 15 and like a month later I got baptized. Wow. And that was really hard because my family's like hardcore Catholic. They're like, when are you coming back? You need to go to the blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, when I die, I want to be cremated anyway, which Ooh, Catholics that really do. Set them up, right? <laughs> <laughs> you were just going in. Just... I want to be cremated anyway. So um, you became you became a Christian at 14, you got baptized at 15, and right now you're like 21, so you've only been a Christian for like six years, right? Yeah, I'm <laughs> only 16 years old. Um, and then after I got baptized, I got really sick. I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease that kept me in and out of the hospital for the next 10 years. And so it was like, I moved towards the Lord, boom, this happened. This happened I'm yeah. still alive. I moved towards the Lord feeling like seeing this burning bush called music. Boom. It was, it's been really hard, mm -hmm. but also so fulfilling. Um, yeah. 
and challenging me to where I feel like church was was really so safe for me for so such a long time. Um, it was my refuge from chaos. And then it became unsafe. It became a place to where I didn't feel like I could actually use my gifts. And I'm not someone who cares about being center of attention. I'm a middle child. I know how to rock by myself. But I felt like who I was as a person wasn't good enough. And I feel like the Lord kind of like crowbarred my finger from my safety and security. Yeah to really experience and see the gospel unfold. And I'm very exhausted, (laughs) but I can't help but think about so many stories I've read throughout my life of following Jesus, like the story of Elijah where Jezebel is killing all these prophets and Elijah's like, "Mm -mm. God, kill me. I don't want to do this. All these prophets are dead. I'm the only one. And God doesn't rebuke him. God doesn't like punish him for being weak and not strong enough. And you have little faith. I'm going to kill you. It was like, you need to take a nap and here's a snack and fed him with ravenous birds, like ravens, birds that take brought food to Elijah. And after he, and after he slept, after he rested, after he recovered, God's like, okay, Now it's time to get up because you still have work to do. Granted, Mm -hmm. a chariot came down for him and he didn't have to die. Um, Jezebel had a green light on him. She was trying to whack that dude. (sighs) Jezebel. So you're originally from L.A., aren't you? I was born here. So I'm I'm like, Lord, am I like retracing my steps? I'm offended with Wikipedia because you look at Wikipedia, there is nothing about L.A. on Liz Vice. Because online. I moved when I was four. It don't matter. Your roots started here. You are they from did. LA. We let we let New York borrow you for a while. We let the Pacific Northwest <laughs> borrow you for a while. But you're back home. You're back home. I mean, but I'm like, it's weird. Yeah. It's it feels really trippy because I'm like, I have never wanted to live here. One, it's too hot. <laughs> Two, when I would be at my grandma's house. Even anytime a truck passed and my grandma lived in East Los. So like, what I live. yeah. So I didn't see the Hollywood LA, the Beverly yeah. Hills LA. I Saw was like, LA. I'm seeing the hood where the ice yeah. cream truck is still going on at 10 PM. Yeah. Ain't where no I'm not walking like- outside <laughs> where I, when I was a kid, I remember I had never seen white people in my grandma's mm-hmm. neighborhood ever. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it looks like now, Yeah, but like I was, like I don't want to live here. Does she I'm live? T- did, does she live by Liso Viejo by any chance? She lived off of like 59th and Slauson. Okay, okay, got you. I don't know where that is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I would come and visit her all the time. I never came to LA as a tourist. It was always I was at my grandma's or I was at my aunt's. Yeah. Um. Well, I remember and- when you were in LA, we took you to Hollywood. We took. Remember, you remember what we want to go eat? Pinks. <laughs> man my anytime i pass that i'm like i can never eat there again my stomach was destroyed i'm like this is worse than a costco hot dog it was funny do you remember that dude that 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 um that dude that started doing the acro healing on you i, I don't know you remember that uh-uh. where he was picking you up and doing all kind of crazy stuff and i'm gonna have to send you those pictures you know, <laughs> this dude with the, with the hawaiian hair like that and and he saw us hanging out with you and he was like oh i'm an acro healer you're like what's that and he's like i use acrobatics to heal people and he was like you remember that no i was just the lady hot, in it was waiting hot, it was I'm that like, hot dog it was that hot dog already <laughs> it was that hot dog and i'm like oh maybe you're so cute yes pick me up spin me in circles <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, it's so weird being back because I'm like, I've never wanted to live here. And now I'm here. I'm like, there's nothing I don't, there's nothing I want out of LA that people who are musicians come to LA for. Mm-hmm. So why am I here? But also yeah. I'm so thankful for where I am. I love my location. It's diverse. It's walkable. I just took the metro for the first time. The train. Nice. Where'd you go? 
um, from the airport to my home. Okay. And I'm like, cool. oh, I can take this to like Pasadena and go mm -hmm. shopping. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna bring a little New York here. It literally is the perfect neighborhood. And I see it being gentrified every single day. Does that sadden you? <sighs> gentrification is tough because when I was, young, I mean, the history of why gentrification happens is like, it's rooted in white supremacy, but yeah. how do we clean up areas without remove like there's so much people just don't want to do the work to clean yeah, up i don't, an area. I don't know what, i don't know what the answer is but i know that it's 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 hard it's, it it's, is hard well, it's it's super hard Be, because of things like that my wife and i so where we're at we're like in the middle of the hood liz we're in a small city called linwood we got compton on one side we got watts on the other yeah and we are where this is where the lord has called us to do ministry and this is where we're at and we're trying to buy a home right now and it's crazy we mm -hmm. just we can't we can't afford like we barely saved up to get a down payment and yeah. you know, people coming in paying cash yeah and outbidding you forty fifty thousand yeah. so I don't know what the answer is I don't think it's gentrification there's got to be some other way to not displace the people in the community yeah but we got to do better yeah you know I, I don't know what the answer is but but we got to do better there's got to be an investment like I love being here and going to like a juice shop and the guys are local. That? A what shop? A juice shop. I like oh, to get juice. fresh juice. Gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I try to go to the places that are more local than mm, this is the first signs of gentrification. Because I yeah. grew up in the hood in Portland. I would get teased by people I went to school with, but I loved my area. And now it's the first time I saw a coffee shop. I was like, uh oh, uh oh, here we go. Yep. I don't know what neighborhood this is because no one ever, there were so many gangs in this neighborhood and now there's nothing except for this coffee shop. And now Portland is like, so getting so expensive, but yeah, I, LA has been so restful. I feel like I've become a hermit here. Like I don't feel obligations the way I have in other places. Um, and how, how much long is this hermit phase going to last for? Do you know? Are you getting ready to come out? Or are you still I don't in know. a comfort zone trying to heal up? Or I feel like I need to heal before. Like there, I don't want to believe that God will call me to pour myself out onto people when there's nothing there. It's just sand. Just continuing to fill. Yeah. And so it's like I'm recording new music at my own pace really proud of these songs like they Good. feel next level but it still feels genuine to who I am and I'm doing it on my own terms and I'm working with people that I feel safe with and outside of the creative part it's like I need to heal from resentment like yeah. your I resentment towards other people yeah resentment okay. towards other people resentment towards experiences resentments towards getting something that I've wanted and it being so hard. Okay. So even some resentment towards God. Oh yeah. Maybe. And maybe I'm putting things that humans did on to God, yeah. but okay. God's big enough. Um, and a little bit bigger than that still. Yeah. And I'm like, I just need to, I want to know what it looks like to, follow Jesus. Well, I feel like I, I know how to take those steps to live like how Jesus did, mm -hmm. but because we live in a society that likes order and rules and it, in order to live like Jesus, you, ha you have to understand that you might be crucified by the very people that you want to partner with you're speaking into <laughs> my heart right now no no i'm serious we we've, yeah so we're a church plant you know yeah I, I think you know what church plants are we started from nothing we started with a few families in a park behind one of the the, the, the biggest trauma centers here in this in this community that serves linwood Compton and watts and we've gone through some crazy church hurt that's yeah. like lord why am i doing this like why yeah. did i why did i uproot my family bring us back to the hood give up a job at a comfortable church, you know, with the office across the street, with a house and a pool. And like, 
why do we do that? And then for people to turn around and just like not give a crap about you and talk mm-hmm. about you and say all kind of stuff. And it wasn't one time. It's like over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. But then we see glimpses of God's greatness and mm-hmm. his glory in restored marriages mm-hmm. and people come into faith and impacting the community and people coming and turning and trusting Jesus. You know, L- let me ask you a pastoral question. Um, are you connected to a church? Are you being discipled and shepherded? Because I want to make sure that my sister who is in a season of healing is that, that somebody's caring for her soul, that somebody's mm-hmm. discipling her and reaching out to make sure she's okay. You know? So the thing is, is like, as soon as people found out I moved to LA, it immediately, it was come like, to my church. Come, come to, my, to church. my church. We <laughs> promise we won't ask you to do anything. Oh, We're and by the way, that, that's not, a, that's not a shameless plug to come to my church. I'm just saying, <laughs> I want to make sure that you're cared for. No, like literally anywhere I go, People are like, come to my church. You won't do anything. This is the first time we're meeting. Or I feel like pastors or people who are a part of churches try to like gauge, is this girl a Christian? Yeah. Oh, so like, man. blah, blah. And I'm like, I know that game too. So here's some scripture, bop, bop, bop. Um, which is like, bop, 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 get away from me. Cause I know what you're doing because I was yeah. trained to do that in Sunday school. Um, there are a lot of things like I am so thankful for my foundation into the church. Like mm-hmm. Clarence is the, is a G when it comes to being a pastor. He, he would bring black kids from really crappy situations and we would go camping for a week and we would give them like space to speak and process their hurt. And it's family. Like mm-hmm. I'm going to see my girlfriends next week that I've known since I was 11 years old. Like we are family. Um, And I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for the churches that I was a part of in Portland, even though, you know, ups and downs and no one's perfect. And maybe I'm still in therapy for some of those scars, but I'm so thankful for my foundation because Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying these pastors, I'm not saying the church I worked for in New York wasn't doing it out of a pure heart, but it just was not a good experience for me. And I needed to take a step back as I sat in churches and saw these women show up on time, praying, reading the scripture, leading Bible studies, but weren't allowed to lead and weren't allowed to like, you're learning how to sharpen the sword. You're learning how to, dress yourself in the armor of God, but you're never going to use it Mm -hmm. unless you want to do Sunday school stuff. And I was, I just felt like I usually don't believe pastors when they're like, we just want you to come and visit because I Mm -hmm. don't want to be like this token of look, Liz Vice is here. I'm like, I'm not even all that. (laughs) And I know eventually you're going to try to get me to sing. Yeah. And I need to, I need to clutch my pearls right Mm -hmm. now. I need to heal. I need to, I need to, I need to reconnect with Jesus in a way that is more about reconnecting with people, Mm -hmm. hearing people's stories, listening to them, um, seeing why am I so rotten? Why do I respond in this way? Why do I, everybody's operating out of some traumatic experience that happened in their life. And they've built these protective barriers around themselves. And that's how they move and engage through life. And we're all trying to do the best that we can, that we can. And so all that to say is no, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, I still work with the church in New York city. I still like make music with them. I'm actually going to meet up with them a few times in June. Yeah. And in Nashville, oh my gosh, my writing people out there, it, when I'm with them, I feel like I'm in heaven. I feel like ooh, I can walk around with my pants off. Like I can just be <laughs> myself. Yeah. Well, yeah, my, my question is more just uh, that, that you're being encouraged, that you're being shepherded, that you're being discipled, that you're being poured into, and that you're being held accountable, right? Yeah. Because, you know, the Lord didn't make us to be, you know, to, to be Lone Rangers. We, he, he made us for a community. And the bad part is that, yeah, sometimes the church hurts us. I heard Jackie Hill Perry 
say, um, and I'm, and I'm paraphrasing here. She said that, that she was, you know, she was hurt by the church and she said, you know what the Lord used to heal me from my church hurt the church, you mm-hmm. know, that the same entity or body that hurt her is what the Lord used to help her heal from that. So, yeah, I just encourage you to not be a lone ranger for too long, you know, yeah. and, and that's not I, a shameless plug. Come to my church, the best. We are not the best church. I am the pastor. Yeah. So, you know, it's not the best church, you know? Um, but yeah, yeah. I would want to make sure that people are being cared for their souls and that they're being discipled and held accountable. Mm-hmm. And encouraged. I mean, and that's why I feel like I don't know how long I can live in LA. So the person that I moved in with is an actress. I met her on set. She was like, I've never met a black woman on set and I've never met someone who loves Jesus. And we've just stayed in touch and I ended up moving in with her, but she travels a lot. And I'm like, I just need home. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I have the energy to invest in building new community. I'm just like so tired that the ones that I have that um, I feel like I can just be myself Mm -hmm. are the ones that I have the energy for. Um, Yeah. So I'm still engaging with, communities especially like porter's gate you know that group that i sing with sometimes yeah they're you guys are awesome together Uh, and then and a lot of them live in nashville and those are the ones that you feel you can it's like you're in heaven oh yeah i mean i love talking about theology without having and being able to ask questions and talk about the hard things and it i don't know i love talking about it but not everybody does and i don't I'm so tired of hiding mm-hmm. um, or hiding being hiding, hiding, hiding your faith or hiding your interest in theology or like, you... hi, like I don't want to have to quiet who I am fully. And that means like, I, like I started, I've gone on a few dates since living here and I went on a date with an atheist <laughs> And I was like, I can't stop talking about Jesus. This is not going to (laughs) work. And not like I'm trying to convince him of anything, but that's just like when I go on my hikes every single day, I'm just like, Lord, what is what are you asking me to do? Lord, is it okay that I'm dreaming? Lord, the enemy lied to to Eve and said, you will become like God, even though God said you are made in my image. Like, what does that mean for people who want to live freely? So these dreams that I have in my heart, are they from you? And what does it look like to move towards that? What does it look like not to be afraid of what I'm going to eat or drink or what I'm going to wear or what I'm going to do in six months to just be present? What does it look like to be follow the love, like to engage with certain people who don't believe in you, but there's something about them that like, I see you working in them. Mm-hmm. Like I listened to this podcast called armchair expert. And I just feel like Dax Shepard. He always says I'm an atheist. I'm an atheist, but he says things that are so transcendent of whether or not he believes in God that I'm like, man, I wish Christians would speak like the that. way you would. Yeah. But I also feel like I think God is talking to this man and he doesn't know yet, <laughs> he, but <laughs> he know he's yet. mentioned like I've had this thing happen and I hate to say it because I'm an atheist, but like it just felt like miraculous that it happened. And I'm like, oh, God, what God is. Oh, let's see how this unfolds. I just like I, I'm so curious because God is bigger than like even in the scripture. I don't remember who said it, but it was like people are so obsessed and have their nose so deep in the Bible that they don't even look up to see reality thinking that they're going to find eternal life in just the words, Mm -hmm. but not living out. I remember Jesus talking about like, when I go away, people are going to say he's in the field or people are going to go live in caves, but it's like, no, you got to live your life. No one knows when Mm -hmm. I'm going to come back. Yeah. For, for me. So I'm, 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 into Reformed theology. I'm the pastor of the Reformed Church of Los Angeles. So my circles are, there's very few people of color in my circles and it's all yeah. really heady, really academic. You know, I, I got my master's of divinity. I'm in my doctorate now because I want to be able to teach in seminaries and I want to be able to teach awesome. people that come from our kind of background, black and brown yeah. uh, backgrounds from the hoods, how to plant healthy. And, and for me, it's confessionally Reformed churches 
But it's not just about the head knowledge, like having mm-hmm. dope theology. It's not dope theology if it never goes from our head to our hearts to our to hands. living, to yeah, living it out. You know, yeah. Um, and, and that's it's it's not just orthodoxy; it's orthopraxy. How do we take good, solid, dope theology and practically live it out? So where people are like, I want the Jesus that this guy's talking mm-hmm, about because mm-hmm. I like I, I see the way he loves his wife, I see the mm-hmm. way he loves his kids, the way he leads his church, the way he engages his community. Mm-hmm. He's authentic. He's flawed, but he's authentic, and he keeps mm-hmm. talking about this Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Like like that's what I want to be. I want to be able to point them to teach them what the Word of God says, that they might fall in love with Christ mm-hmm. through His Word. You know. It's the um, kindness. I was, yeah, I, w- I was really saddened. Um, yesterday, a, a friend of mine called me up and he's like, hey, have you heard pastor such and such? You know, there was a pastor who used to serve at the church that we used to be at. And I was like, well, I know his theology went wacky a long time ago with some of the issues that he stands on. But um, hey, you know, what can I say? But I, he said, no, you got to watch his last sermon. And I watched it and it broke my heart to mm. see how this guy I used to look up to and serve alongside just like completely lost it. Yeah. And, and, um, yeah. And, it, and it's, it, it really broke my heart to see a person that I looked up to, um, on his own now, not, not paying attention to anybody, not, um, held accountable, not being encouraged just on his own thing. And it's like, dude, and, and he's taking people with him, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, it was, it was truly, truly sad. But all, all that to say, I love theology. I love talking yeah, about theology, not too. arguing, but no. I love, do you know, okay. Do you know what pedal baptism is? No. Oh, baby uh, baptism. Yes. Yeah. That's me. I bang that all day long. Catholic. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm no. saying. I'm like, well, yeah, that's like a whole other thing. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, I, I love engaging because I want people to understand. Like, you don't have to agree with me. Yeah. But, I, but at least understand why a large portion of the historic church does this, has done it, and is still doing it now. Yeah. You know, understand why we believe this, this, and this, and what our theology yeah. teaches because the Bible says this, this, and this, you know? I think my... My jam when it comes to being a follower of Christ is how Jesus loved. And I'm not talking about like, God is in my heart. I can do whatever I want. Me and God are chill. No, I'm like, no. I, like when Jesus was engaging with the Samaritan woman, where he's teaching women at his house, Martha, stop doing stuff and come sit down so I can teach you. Because yeah. you ain't going to learn this in the streets. Mm-hmm. They they are not going to respect you. Yeah. You guys are going to believe that I'm back before these dudes, these 12 dudes. They're going to see and it like, first. And like just seeing these things and then talking to my friend where it was like James and John on the Mount of Transfiguration, Transfiguration where yeah. Elisha and Moses, Elisha and Moses came back and the cloud came down and she was like, do you remember like when they were in the wilderness and anytime the cloud came down over the mountain, they weren't allowed to go up because it would consume them. But then the cloud came down because they knew that story. Mm -hmm. And she's like, isn't that crazy that that's probably why they were scared. And I'm like, I love these conversations (laughs) because it's like the, we get so caught up on the rules. If you do this, if you do this, you're going to go to hell. You're going to, I'm just living. I'm not a person of this world. I'm living towards heaven. So then you just neglect the people and the yeah. land in front of you. And I'm like, what does it look like to really engage, let the rocks cry out? What does it look like to answer those calls? What does it look like to tend the garden that has grown around the blood of Abel because there's been a lot of bloodshed over jealousy and land that people don't own. There's been a lot of bloodshed over you're a witch. You're not a Christian. You are a Christian. Like we're just ripping each other to shreds. And I'm like, this is why Jesus cried over Jerusalem. Like how did we get so far from the freedom? How did we get so far from the garden? Do we have access to the garden now? Like, what does it look like? And for myself, I feel like it has to start within before I can, I have to rest in the cave yeah. before I can go back out and continue. It is what God is doing, but I'm slowly doing things. Like I'm, I'm listening to teachings. I really like NT, right. And listening to the Bible project and engaging with friends and journaling and and making music with my people and having these conversations. Like, I just feel like I need space to heal. And then I need to live in community. Yeah. Um, because I feel more human when I'm around 
my people. Yeah. Well, Liz, we've been talking now for about an hour and five minutes. And, <laughs> yeah. and it feels like we just started. Um, and I know you said you had something else to do afterwards, but. Um, oh, yeah, therapy. <laughs> I, I didn't know what it was. You just. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I got other things to do. I need to focus on getting my mind right because yeah. my mind affects my whole body. And I. Yeah. It's just so important. I need to learn how to capture, take every thought. Into captivity. Yeah. And like, re. I need to like change my narrative that goes in my mind mm -hmm. where God is not calling us to strive where it's like, Martha, just sit down. Yeah. Um, just sit down and be with me. I Is want my that... daughter. I want... Natalia, come here. Somebody wants to say hi. Natalia. She got so embarrassed. <laughs> Just so you know, she went from being a 12 year old fan of yours. She's 15 year old. She goes to yeah. Oxa, the LA County High School of Arts. Yeah. She's in vocal jazz. She's one of our main worship leaders at church. And I she's love got, it. She's got bright pink hair. And I love her to death. She's my baby. But she got embarrassed when I called her over here. Uh oh. Um, but I, yeah. can, can, I don't know. Can I, can I pray for you before we. I love we, it. Yes. I want to be, be mindful of your time. I'm just yeah. saying, I'm really honored to be your friend. I'm grateful for who you are, how you are living out your faith. Mm -hmm. whether it is on stage recording dating an atheist talking to i'm him. not dating him i went on like <laughs> two dates with him all right and i was sorry. like nah i can't do this sorry somebody who you went out with you know what i mean yeah. um past tense or, or singing at a, at, a, at a dive bar in hollywood talking about jesus to people who don't know him you know it's always um, gonna come up like there is n it ain't going nowhere it's just a yeah. part of who i am and yeah. like I want to be bold about it the same way people are bold about their practices, hot yoga, whatever it is. I want to be like, <laughs> I don't want to like put it in people's faces, but I'm just like, this is who I am. This is how I operate. I want to talk. I talk about Jesus like, oh, yeah, Jesus is coming over today and we're going to like go on a hike like my friend, my mentor, the Holy Spirit is there to pray for me like Jesus prays over his apostles like i have to believe that this isn't just some fairy tale that i'm reading in the fiction section of the of the library but it's this is applicable to my life too mm -hmm. um so can i can i give you a scripture mm -hmm. so i know that that in in this process of the lord you would call it pruning purifying sanctifying you um as he's taking you through this process right um i think of the crucible that they talk about in and going through the refinery fire in proverbs mm -hmm. how um it removes all the impurities right mm -hmm. from the from the fine minerals gold and silver and, and i know the lord does that to to us as well right and, and it's not always a pleasant feeling as as mm -hmm. things are being removed from our lives um some of them toxic uh, mm -hmm. or, or we don't know they're toxic but but they they, they are or can be Mm -hmm. But 2 Corinthians 1, verses 3 through 5, talk about the God of all comforts mm -hmm. comforting us so that we in turn can comfort, can comfort others. others with the same comfort mm -hmm. he's comforted us with. I love that. And, and, yeah. and what a blessing to know that, that God has, has walked with us through difficult times so that we in turn can comfort other people who are going through the same exact mm -hmm. thing. You know, can I pray for you? Mm-hmm. Can I just say no, one more you thing? You were going to say something. Yeah, go for it. I was just going to say, like, that's why I think rest is important because mm -hmm. I think Sabbath is important because it is saying, I, I believe that God, the creator of the whole universe, mm -hmm. is in charge. And just because I choose to rest doesn't mean that everything is going to stop. No. Yeah. Doesn't mean the world is going to stop spinning. Doesn't mean that I'm going to miss out. Like, even with touring with Lecrae, I was invited to a friend's wedding and I didn't want to miss that wedding. Mm -hmm. And my manager was not okay with that. He was like, you're going to have to learn this is show business, not friend business. And I was like, I'm not missing my friend's wedding. I wanted to set that precedence that I do not live to work. And I was like, if Lecrae really wants me to go on tour with him, then he will understand. And he did. Mm -hmm. And then I went on tour. And I was sick the whole time, but I was so thankful for that experience. And I felt so loved and supported by that, 
by Lecrae's team and yeah. like he waited and that was like a sign of like it is okay to say no it is okay to rest and recover you are not a lazy bum you were just doing what god intended from the beginning yeah and, and rest is such a huge part somebody like me i need to to, to keep hearing that over and over again because mm-hmm. i feel because i haven't always been a christian i came to yeah. faith in prison you know yeah. banging my whole life and all that and, and i always feel like i like i gotta i gotta give god back more i gotta give god I more. I, I gave so much time to the streets and i feel like i gotta catch up but it's like the mm-hmm. lord also wants me to be healthy Mm-hmm. And, and whole and heal that I might continue to be around for many years mm-hmm. to do ministry. Deep breaths and God can take you like that. And so oh, yeah. it's just like, I don't have control. Rest can be intertwined with your everyday living, with your everyday work life. Do you trust me? Hmm. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Triune God, you are the creator of all things. You are the reconciler of all things. And one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Christ is Lord. Lord, I thank you for my sister Vice, for the person whom you have uniquely, wonderfully and and, and created her to be uh, made in your image with the gifts you have given. She is using them for your glory. I pray for her in the season of rest. I pray for her in the season of healing um, that you would provide first for all of her needs according to your glory in Christ Jesus, that she would feel encouraged, that she would feel loved, that she would never forget about the Christ who lived the perfect life that she never could and died a death that was meant for her and for myself, that if only we believe in him, we'd be saved. I pray for her relationship with the risen Savior. I pray that she would exalt him through her music, through her conversations, and through everything that she does because that's just who she is and she is about you and you are at the center of her life i pray um, as she is in her hermit season when she comes out uh, that she would feel rested that she would feel full of joy healed uh, but above all knowing that you are with her wherever she goes uh, i bless her lord in christ's name asking you to give her strength above anything she could ever expect wisdom and discernment far beyond anything she'd ever imagined but most of all the peace and joy that surpasses all understanding because we know it comes from you I bless your Lord in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amiga, mi hermana, you are loved. I thank you so much for your time. Uh, I hope we can do this again and not have to wait five or six years or something. (laughs) Thanks for your persistence. (laughs) I was like, uh, I have too much on my plate. I'm going to fall apart. Uh Um, But it happened. I'm thankful for your friendship over the years. Don't worry, I'm not trying to date atheists. I just wanted to see if I ever could. And I was like, I literally can't. It's like a dam broke and yeah. the water was pouring through. I'm like, and then Jesus, Jesus. Deep, I can't stop talking about last. It's just so important to me. Yeah. I love I'm just so fascinated by it and yeah. just need to take a breath and figure it all out. Amen. Well, I, I thank you for your time. I look forward to hearing this new music that you're working on. Yeah. Uh, excited to hear your heart uh, come through it. Uh, but for now, in case anybody listening, whether they're watching now live or they'll catch it later on on the podcast, um, where is the best way for them to get a hold of your music? I mean, Spotify, Liz Vice, Instagram is, I mean, I'm like neglected my website because I also don't know how to keep it up, but also it's just like, I can only operate one thing uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm like, it's either Instagram, Twitter, or my website. Uh-huh. So Instagram is where I like post where the next thing is going to happen and what I'm okay. up to. Um, a lot of good stuff is happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just taking it one day at a time. I'm proud. I'm really trying. <laughs> well, if there's anything I can do for you, my yeah. family can do for you, or our church can do for you, as long as you are here, and I'll even if you leave or whatever, know that you have friends here and that we are happy to be able to help intercede or just pray for you in yeah. any way that we can. All yeah. right. If you guys have a barbecue, let me know. Oh, you going? Okay, we gonna we're gonna invite you, right? Okay. And you're not and you're not gonna be asked to sing, and you're not gonna be asked to do nothing, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But you're gonna fall in love with the Mexican food, and then if you don't leave, that's oh, on I you. I love Mexican food. If you don't leave, that's on you because we make the dopest <laughs> carne asada, right? That's what I want. <laughs> 
Sis, love you. Bless you. Thank you so much for your time. God Thank be with you. you. And I will be reaching out soon. Okay. All right. Okay. Bless you. Bye now. Bye. Take care.